Hey everyone, it's Karen and I wanted to review 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life by Karen Armstrong and also I wanted to tell you about what I'm going to do going forward after reading this book. Um, so basically Karen Armstrong, if you haven't heard of her, is a religious historian and has written so many books and I want to read them all. She was brought to my attention by my friend Allie and also Lukash from, I don't know his new channel name, used to be totally pretentious. It is not anymore. I will link him below. Um, but basically, uh, this book is exactly what it says, 12 Steps to a More pa Compassionate Life. She designed this program kind of based on the 12 Steps for Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, however, she it's all about compassion, obviously. She wants us to be more compassionate in our world. And these are kind of like her main like guidelines or I don't know, like guiding points, I guess, to have a more compassionate life. And they are to, hang on, I have to move my sticky, to restore compassion to the center of morality and religion, to return to the ancient principle that any interpretation of scripture that breeds violence, hatred, or disdain is illegitimate, to ensure that youth are given accurate and respectful information about other traditions, religions, and cultures, to encourage a positive appreciation of cultural and religious diversity, and to cultivate an informed empathy with the suffering of all human beings, even those regarded as enemies. So that's how she starts off her book by letting you know, you know, what she's actually thinking about. And I'll just talk about a few interesting points before I tell you what I'm going to do for the first part of this book. So everyone knows what the golden rule is, but I thought it was really interesting that um, Confucius is the first person who has ever been like, I guess, uh, found to have said the golden rule. And so he was alive from 551 to 479 BCE approximately. And um, he said, never do to others what you would not like them to do to you. So essentially the golden rule, but I thought it was interesting to hear about the history. Um, and then she kind of talks about this idea of empathy and where it could come from. And so she talks about evolution and how um, humans used to have like hair on their bodies or fur. And so a baby would cling to that. But when Homo sapiens came around, like they no longer have tons of fur. So the baby can't cling to its mom or its dad. And so it actually has to be held when it's uh, not able to take care of itself yet. Um, and it said, because his mother had no fur, the human baby could not cling to her. Instead, she had to clasp and carry him for hours at a time, subordinating her own hunger, needs, and desires to his in a process that was no longer automatic, but emotionally motivated and to a degree voluntary. Um, it, she also talks about kind of the feelings that um, one has when they are with an infant or a young child. However, she extends that to even talk about like our feelings of relaxation. So like I don't have kids at home, but I have cats and I am always into like cozy evenings. I'm very into like huga and stuff like that. And um, this idea of physical relaxation can bring, up bring upon feelings of peace, security, and well-being. So in a sense, we're kind of like mothering ourselves, and these emotions are activated by such hormones as oxytocin. So even just like being cozy and comforting yourself uh, can release some of those uh, hormones. And uh, she also talks about mirror, mirror neurons in the brain that allow us to have empathy for someone else and be able to put ourselves in their situation. And obviously all these things kind of go together to um, just, you know, cause you to be compassionate. So after all that intro, she gets into the 12 steps. So I'll just read through them for you so that you know what they are. Um, okay, the first step is learn about compassion. Then look at your own world compassion for yourself, empathy, mindfulness, action, how little we know, how we should speak to one another, concern for everybody, knowledge, recognition, and love your enemies. Um, so what I decided to do, there are 12 steps 
So that kind of works itself to like one a month or so. Um, I was thinking of waiting until January, but like if I have an idea for something and I'm excited about it, I really need to start right now. So um, yes, I am going to start by focusing on around one of these a month. If I'm still kind of working on one, I might extend it beyond like the month, but um, for the start of November, I'm going to be on the first step, which is learning about compassion. Um, and so basically, she says that we are trying to retrain our responses and form mental habits that are kinder, gentler, and less fearful of others. And so you're spending a lot of this time just learning about compassion, but she says not to stop there, that we have to put it in action. We can't just learn about it and not do anything about it. Um, and so um, she suggests that we start by um, going to this website it's called the Charter for Compassion and you can just like create an account or something and I think you get like emails and stuff that will keep you up to date. And then um, beyond that, it's just learning in whatever kind of direction that you want to learn as far as uh, compassion, learning about other uh, religions or learning more about your own religion and how those religions really uh, approach this idea of compassion. Um, let me see if there's anything else I want to share. Oh, <laughs> hold the phone because we need to have a chat. So I thought this was so interesting in this world of COVID where many of us are getting frustrated why, with people who appear to only care about themselves, think they can do what they want to, even if it harms others. You know, we have all these rules like you can't yell fire in a movie theater. Yes, you have freedom of speech, but that's not a safe choice. And, um, you know, all sorts of other things. You have to wear clothes when you go into a restaurant or into a store. And yet this idea of masks is suddenly like, you can't tell me what to do. I have my rights. And like, I don't know where that came from. But anyway, oh, this just struck me. She says, um, basically that like forever we have lived in groups, tribes, etc., And at a time when survival depended on sharing limited resources, a reputation for altruism and generosity as well as physical strength and wisdom may have been valued in a tribal leader. I would still agree that we should still have that. And um, basically she goes on to say like if you don't share your resources when you have enough to share then when you're struggling <laughs> you can't count on your tribe to like help you. Um, the clan would survive only if members subordinated their personal desires to the requirements of the group and were ready to lay down their lives for the sake of the whole community. It was necessary for our humans to become a positive presence in the minds of others, even when they are absent. Um, and I just feel like wearing a mask is such a simple thing. And this is kind of like, this is the direction we need to go is uh, to communities where we are caring about our neighbors. Um, she also talks about the axial age, which I hadn't heard, heard of before, but I found this really interesting. It was from around 900 to 200 BCE. And basically like all these ideas that are in major religions came during this time, because one of the things that has fascinated with me with world religions is how similar they are. And like, how are they so similar when they came from all different, like, areas and stuff. I mean, a lot of them were kind of centered on the Middle East, but still. Um, and it said, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, for example, were all Latter-day followings of this original vision, which they translated marvelously into an idiom that spoke directly to the troubled circumstances of a later period. Compassion would be a key element in each of these movements. Um, so, yeah, this just kind of um, gives more of a background on compassion. There's two more things I want to share. Um, one was talking about yoga, which obviously I'm super interested in and how it is not just an exercise, but it's definitely like a lot more than that. It's a lifestyle and a yogi basically did the opposite of what came naturally. So, um, just really like finding comfort in discomfort and like settling into situations in your life that are not going so well 
and feeling all your feelings, uh, really being compassionate to others. And then also uh, the Buddha was talking about like life after enlightenment. And I think that this is super important. Like I said, I'm going to be reading some books, which I'll share in a minute, but that's not it. You have to like do more after you learn. So he said, after enlightenment, blah, blah, blah. after enlightenment, he said, a person must return to the marketplace and there practice compassion to all doing anything he or she could to alleviate the misery of other people. So it's not just about reading and learning. It is about actually doing it. But with that being said, I wanted to share some books that I do plan to read um, while I'm on this first step of learning more about compassion. So I would really like to read A History of God, which covers like the three major world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Um, and yeah, um, she's like a religious historian. So I like cannot even believe how much I'm going to probably learn through this book. I'm so excited and I'm really glad my friends introduced me to her. And then another book by her, this is all about Buddha. And I find like his ideas super interesting. And I don't really feel that they conflict with my beliefs as a Christian at all. They kind of add to it and accentuate certain things. But yeah, I'm excited to learn more about that. And then also Muhammad, because I don't know hardly anything about him as well. So um, yeah, and then I'm going to read another book by her. So these are all by her because I basically went to the library and requested every single book that they had by her. Um, this is A Battle for God. And I think this is particularly relevant to like our American culture right now. But basically, I think this is mostly about fundamental uh, Christianity, but also a, a few other religions too. And just like where that came from, um, says why fundamentalist groups came into existence and what they yearned to accomplish. And then finally, I don't have it, but hopefully soon I'll get it. I want to read Strength to Love by MLK because I think that that will be like, okay, you've learned all this now what? And um, yeah, so if anyone wants to join me on this kind of journey, it would be fun to do something on Voxer or whatever. But yeah, I'm really excited. This is a book that definitely like I just did a rereading video, which will come out on Tuesday. And this is one that I will reread often. Like I read the whole thing once and now I'm taking it apart section by section and really focusing on those sections. So I'm curious what you guys think about compassion in general or other texts you'd recommend for this section on learning more about compassion. I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you later. Bye.